Here is a Ganymede event, which is the red dots, uh, compared to an Io event. So this is Europa's intensity normalized by the object that's occulting it. So uh, we see that Europa did not dim when it went behind Ganymede. Europa did dim when it went behind Io. So yet another independent method showing that the source of the dimming is the moon being occulted by Io. Dimming source conclusion. Source of the dimming has been linked to the moon being occulted by Io or Europa. The start of the dimming and end of dimming defines boundaries of extinction material. Uh, moons being occulted by Io suffer extinction of their light when they are within 5 to 30 Io radii. Okay. Moons being occulted by Europa suffer extinction all the way out 22 to 30 Europa radii. Now, interestingly, and I don't have in my talk other work, if you go to my paper at the very end, there are references to other uh, bodies of work. These are the exact same numbers they came up with. And I didn't realize that until after I reduced all that, that Brown and Schneider and a whole bunch of people who have been doing this said, Europa has about a 25 Europa radii atmosphere. Io has between 6 and 10. So these are some of the exact same numbers. Uh, moons by Ganymede uh, do not suffer the same extinction. We did not have any Callisto of, uh, occultations to, to test that. Uh, because this all came about two months to, at the end of the mutual event season, so we just didn't have time uh, to do that. Um, and then finally, the asymmetry that's noted. So let's look at the asymmetry. This became very interesting because there was a consistency we found in the asymmetry, which, by the way, asymmetry in itself highlights that it can't be camera response because it would be symmetrical around the, two, the merging event if it were camera response. There would be no way for it to be asymmetrical. Uh, well, I guess there's some ways. But anyway, <laughs> what we found was um, that if, if Io was west of Jupiter and the occulted, occulted of the moon occurred on the western limb, the ingress over the egress ratios were greater than one. If Io was east of Jupiter and the occulted, moon was, uh, occulted the moon was its western limb, the, the ratio was less than one. Putting, putting it simply is it's simply the Jupiter-facing limb presented the longer extinction event. So what that's representing, in my opinion, is that there is additional material likely, this is just my theory, likely streaming back towards Jupiter from Io uh, that is causing this asymmetry. Uh, at first, my first theory was that it was the motion of Io, that, that like a comet uh, type, uh, model in which the front of Io's motion would be compressed and there would be a trailing tail. That wasn't the case. It was, not, it was linked to which limb was facing Jupiter. So that's just a simply noted. Okay, so here is yet, so how else can we find Io's atmosphere? Don Parker, here comes the pretty picture section. Uh, Don Parker donated to this project. Uh, I, I requested Io transit pictures in an effort to try and see if I could measure any intensity changes surrounding Io on Jupiter's face as Io passed in front of it. And if indeed there's an atmosphere, or a measurable atmosphere, extinctive atmosphere around Io, I should find it not only around Io, but around the shadow it projects too. And I did, okay. So, I, I beat my punchline. So here, what I did was, using a, a method that I've used, I created a pseudo background image by projecting the max signal from these two images so it removed the two moons. So it gave me sort of a, sub a subtraction thing. I've got another technique that I used in my x-ray, uh, in my professional career, you might say, as x-ray imaging, uh, in which I scrub off what I call an ultrasonic cleaning, scrub off all the detail to try and just come up with a median intensity trend of the background of Io. So then when I uh, took a intensity sample of one of the uh, original raw images here. Uh, that's the sample area represented. And then I divided it by the scrubbed off image. Indeed, I see off to the limb of Io that there is indeed a brightening trend, or I should say an extinction trend as you get closer to the limb of Io. So there was yet another sort of fun method. And here's an even funner one. So then I thought, well, what if I just subtract the background from one of those images? And indeed, you get a concentric disturbance uh, visible right there around, uh, this is the shadow of Io. So this is, this is looking at the shadow to see if does it show up in that, and indeed it does. And by the way, yes, I've checked, it's not the penumbra because 
uh, I had additional data to show pin number was much smaller. This goes out to about two IO radii right here. So, uh, other sources. I data mined the IMCCE uh, database and just out of curiosity pulled randomly just started pulling light curves out and indeed the same asymmetry was found. And th there is a problem. They only typically have six minute wing data so that uh, presents itself as a problem. But indeed not only did I find the asymmetry it was also consistent yet with the Jupiter facing limb. So there was yet another data point from another in 2003, a different apparition of the mutual event season. Uh, why has this been missed? All right, my theory is we just haven't been looking out far enough. This is the same light curve. The top light curve represents what you'll find in a typical database, six minutes worth of wing data, maybe 10 minutes at most. And you can't tell that anything odd is happening. Look at the same thing with two hours or with an hour of wing data on your side. There's the extinction event. Not only that, I don't know if you if you've noticed, but actually the intensity flattens off here uh, in the uh, in the six minute wing data because I believe what's this is my theory this was a real deep occultation it was a total occultation of Europa and I believe probably the densest part of Io's atmosphere is closer into the planet is a little more consistent so it created a flat uh, extinction area there anyway no theory how easy is this to detect? This is done in an 80 millimeter finder scope, and indeed it is still detectable even in such a crude setup. So uh, this is easy to, to, to find in my opinion. Now, th my talk would have ended right here uh, prior to submitting this paper in the first week of April, except for I had another harebrained idea. The, the, the material off of IO is is wandering off into space. It's trapped for a while magnetically by a, a, a process, a, a, a torus ring around Jupiter. So uh, if you notice in this famous uh, Catalina Observatory picture, notice that the bright uh, out at the ends. Well that, uh, of the, this is the torus ring and this is the material that streams off of Io. So I noticed that there happens to be a fortuitous uh, alignment, collimation you might say, out at the ends uh, even though this material is very tenuous, out at the tips of the torus, there's about 200 IO radii of collimated torus material. So I then theorized that we should be able to see extinction of IO itself when it passes in its eastern or western tip. Oh, I wasn't going to take questions to the end, but go ahead. No, five minutes. Oh, that's five minutes. Oh, okay. Five minutes, okay. So, well, we had noticed secondary extinction uh, notches in our light curve. So when I went to model some of these, what was going on? Let me back up real quick here. So this notch, at this particular, the left-hand notch, Io was exiting the torus tip. On the right-hand notch, Europa was entering the torus tip, or behind it, I should say. It wasn't in, actually physically entering. So both of those occurred at sort of a mutual transition area. So I thought, oh. So I created a set of predictions. Uh, here's what's going on uh, visual of our view is Earth's view right here, and uh, you see the collimation of the extinction material. So I created a set of predictions and have started a new observing program of what I called Jupiter Extinction Events, JEEs. And uh, we've already accumulated six light curves uh, in the last two weeks, and here's some of them uh, that show indeed. Here is a double event. Io is brightening as it's exiting uh, its uh, eastern uh, western torus. Uh, Europa was passing behind the eastern torus tip and shows uh, indeed a brightening trend. Here is a dimming trend as Io is entering its western torus tip. Uh, here's a really good one. With, now that Jupiter's getting further away, we're getting longer data and we're starting to get uh, some of the almost back to nominal. Uh, here is another extinction event where Europa simply passed, and it was a conjunction of Europa and Ganymede. It didn't occult it, it just passed near it, far enough, close enough near it, that indeed the extinction from Europa's atmosphere caused uh, noted dimming, which matched our 0.2 magnitude drop uh, when it was projected out. And here is a doozy. This is a complex one. Io exiting its tip starting to brighten here, and then Europa passes in front of it, so then you get a secondary dimming because Europa passed in front of it, and then as Europa whizzes past, Io returns, tries to return to its nominal thing, so 